Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm Ian. I'm Justine. And I'm Gary. And today we're taking a look at a movie that came out in 2013, Under The Skin. Ian, the synopsis. Okay. Um, Scarlett Johansson wanders round Scotland, picking up men. So as you can see from Ian's very brief synopsis that the plot for this movie isn't as substantial as say every other alien takeover or every other alien body snatcher movie and this is technically an alien invasion or an alien body snatcher film yeah from the beginning of the film with the opening we are we are in this white room and we have a body on the floor and and looks like Scarlett Johansson yeah. stripping her and putting on all of her clothes and that is straight away, we're not given any dialogue, we're just given some, some, some letters of the alphabet said in a very monotone voice, whilst we see lots of lights and shapes moving around yeah. in a void. So straight away, lots of questions are getting brought up. And we do see that it is Scarlett Johansson who's now fully dressed in this girl's clothes. And we think she's dead. And then there's that moment where you realise that that girl is actually crying a single tear. So... Not really sure what's going on at the beginning of the film. We're given no explanation as to what's happening. But then we see Scarlett Johansson out fully dressed and driving around in a van. And as you've said, abducting men or luring them with the promise of sex and dissolving their bodies in a vat of emptiness. Yeah, we, we are going to get into spoiler territory a lot with this film. So if you are interested in watching this film, then we suggest obviously... Pausing this video, going and getting a copy, and then coming back. But from this moment on, spoiler territory. <laughs> I really found this movie quite difficult to follow. I, I understood the synopsis, you know, the fact that Scarlett Johansson plays an alien who has come to Earth and is going around abducting men. And taking them to weird places, into black voids, and then sucking them into weird oily pools. But this film is an hour and 40 minutes long, and there is 20 minutes of talking in it. The rest is just ambience. So many shots of just Scarlett Johansson in the van. You well, see, I disagree completely. Well, I don't disagree with the factual, technical elements. Yeah. Um, but I think that it was a film... I followed the film quite easily in terms of my own interpretation. And I think that those wonderful long pauses and that ambience and the lack of dialogue really facilitated a, a personal interpretation of it. I understand that. I mean, this film has multiple angles you can come to, but mm. the first few times where it is just quiet, I was I was getting drawn into it. You know, I wanted to, to see where this would go. Then it went into another quiet scene. And well, another <laughs> quiet scene. But that was to allow you to join the dots between the scenes. I, I, I wanted to join the dots, but I put the pen down halfway through. Well, this is from director Jonathan Glazier, who's, for me, most notable film they directed in the past is Sexy Beast with Ray Winston. Yeah, yeah. And we've already seen that he can handle characters very well. And given in Sexy Beast, they have a lot of dialogue. Yeah. What's that, Sancho? You want me to cut your hands off, use it as an ashtray? Whereas in here, the dialogue is very minimal. And as a result, the film almost takes on a sort of documentary style because 
we're just seeing lots of what I would call those filler shots. Yeah, yeah. But the camera does stay on Scarlett Johansson enough times, even if she's not speaking or doing anything, or if she's just acting within her scene, we're still given enough from the scene previous and with what's and we're trying as an audience to try and invest ourselves in her character yeah. and what's going on. And I think there's enough nuances in all of those scenes to actually uh, get deeper and deeper into this character with every scene that, that goes by. I also want to talk about Scarlett Johansson because in the last few years, uh, I'm going to say when she first started acting, when she did films like The Island and then when she started to turn up into the Avengers film, people celebrated her as this sexy actress that could do all of these parts and I just didn't really see an actress in there. I just saw a very glamour celebrity model. Right. But with the likes of her and with her acting in this film, she's actually, in my eyes, elevated herself as a solid actress that can actually portray many different uh, assets or facets of of, um, of humanity. Well, I, I, I won't take that away from the film. The technical stuff behind this film is absolutely brilliant as an independently made movie well as to say it's actually been compared to the likes of stanley kubrick's work yeah. yeah and the irony as well of you saying that originally she was just eye candy um of the oh. whole premise and the thematics revolving around what's under your skin that it's not how you look it is actually who you are as a person. I, yeah, I agree. I think that's quite fundament- important. Yeah, so, you know, that transition from being eye candy to quite a... You know, it's almost like she's commenting on her public perception and saying... Especially this after is all of I the am. Hollywood nude yeah. leaks and especially with the fact that I know a lot of people got interested in this film because they found out that Scarlett Johansson is nude in quite a few scenes in the film. And it frustrates me that the film gets attention for that. Whereas you kind of have to argue how much the film would be different if it was an unknown actress in that part or whether it was strictly having an A-list celebrity in this low-budget alien film. See, that's the thing. Like I said, the technical side of this movie is, is, is brilliant. You know, to be able to get Scarlett Johansson, at the moment one of our biggest actresses, I actually, I actually mirror her to some of the 50s actresses that we had, people like Greta Garbo and, and, and some of the others. But... <laughs> You know, and she she has played some amazing characters over the last few years. And I I do see her, you know, hearing her voice in her was absolutely brilliant. Seeing her in in Avengers and Iron Man, you know, she made the Black Widow real for me, which I thought was going to be quite difficult. But she comes into this film and having her, some of the shots where she is just sat in the van and she's looking at the world in such an alien view were really really well done you know i was just like okay i'm going with this i want to see what happens but the subtext you know it's it's all subtext she was looking at the world from an alien view but it was forcing us to as well and yeah and as a woman i think who um certainly when i was younger is subjected to these these perfect representations of yeah. how a woman should be and the interactions between the men that you've just met and you know, those subcontexts. Yeah. And that's why you need the space in the movie to pick up but on the, all of And it's pictures. interesting that they'd actually set it in Scotland, it's which a is... of genius. It which, wasn't just Scotland, it was Glasgow. Yeah. You yeah. know, your Hollywood starlet. Yeah. In, 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 in a real of Glasgow alien environment. Totally. And it's almost alien to, to people in Europe as well. Yeah. because And also in, in film world, where there's not many films set in Scotland other than perhaps the most notorious being Train Spotting. Yeah. Um, so we do get insights into the Glasgow way of life. We get to see them in the rural areas, in the city areas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we get to see the mountains, the lakes, and the ocean. And the film does a fantastic job of capturing all of those environments. Uh, that breathtaking some of those shots. But it is it is a very much an alien world that she is inhabiting in, as well as it also being. Glasgow and we also do get to see the good and bad aspects of the people in Glasgow that has to be said that there is a nice balance between those that are genuine yeah. and nice and friendly and helpful and then there's those that would gang up and start shaking the van violently in the middle of the road I mean, I mean, like I said, the, the camera work was absolutely brilliant. The casting was brilliant. There was no script, really, you know, to, to follow. But but that's where I had the problem because, I, you know, I kept losing interest 
I kept losing into I kept thinking to myself, okay, maybe they're going to explain, you know, what's going to happen. Nothing. Right. So then I've got to make the, I've got to make up the answers myself to my own questions, which means I'm being distracted away from the film because I'm trying to understand exactly what I'm actually seeing. You know, she's driving around in this van and those shots were absolutely brilliantly done. You know, she's stopping people in the middle of the street. What would you do if Scarlett Johansson stopped you in the middle of the street asking you for directions? You'd probably be like, bah, 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 on camera <laughs> too. Where are you going? Oh, I For what? For work? No, I'm going to go pick something. Are you going to meet someone? Aye. All right. Well, thank you. Sure. You know, but, you know, it's just these long shots and then it will cut to another shot of her going and talking to somebody else and then it will cut to another shot i mean the the quick cuts in one conversation up leading up to the first kill it was just quick cut quick cut quick quick, quick cut and then it then she leads into this house and I, I you know i'm sat there i'm making notes i'm like okay let's see where this leads to and i actually wrote down what the fuck was what it led to. What what the fuck did it lead to? I've just jumped all of over these scenes and then you've taken me to an even more obscure kind of like hard that. to explain scene and then you've left that scene to go off <clears throat> and carry on doing something. So, so I'm I, I like questioning those what, that. what the fuck moments because mm. we, we we see several times that she leads them to a house yeah. and from the inside of the doorway, everything inside is black. So we're wondering whether this black room is in the front door, whether it's in the basement, whether it's in the attic, whether yeah. this house is actually just, I don't know, a hologram and they're walking inside a spaceship somewhere else at this point in time. We don't know. <laughs> you can just use your imagination. And I think the filmmakers really use their imaginations in, in an interesting way when they stripped down all of that background and you would just have that blackness and that that sort of liquid surface that yeah. they're walking across. I just think making it that simplistic, it just really gets it down to what essentially is happening and it allows it to, allows you to use your imagination and ponder what is actually happening. Yeah. But both physically and mentally. But you can ponder too much, I feel. Especially in this film where there is there are there are no explanations not not you know i mean the ending is quite you know revealing to you but even then it's not fully explained one of the scenes that i just kept questioning what the fuck is going on is when she went to the beach you know she goes to, she goes to this beach and she sees this guy swimming and so she starts questioning him and you're thinking okay right i've seen you lure off two other guys so you're planning on just luring off this guy and then a woman jumps into the sea after her dog because the dog's drowning. The woman drowns. The dad jumps in the water to save the woman. And that's that's, and that's showing that, humanity, and it's a direct no, no, because they leave to... their son on the beach. No human being would ever do that. I watched the swimmer run down the beach. He could have jumped into the water, jumped onto a rock. And then jumped out is, to save the woman, and he literal, ran around the beach. But you're taking a literal, a literal reading with this. And one of the one of the, the the things that I absolutely love about the film is that it has so many um, different readings that you can attach to it. And yeah. An interesting one that I read was um, critically was that um, the whole the whole narrative was driven by Scarlett Johansson as a character that had been raped. And right. therefore, um, it was her perception of the world after this rape where she couldn't engage with men on an emotional level. She couldn't, that the world seemed alien after yeah. this horrific, horrific crime. And that, that as a reading has started to get some credence. So that um, was from the book? No, no, this was from the actual movie. Right. Um, and another really, the more traditional one, which I think we'll probably go into in a bit more detail in a moment, um, 
is a different reading altogether. Right. And I've, and you you've obviously taken it incredibly literal. And, and it, you're right. I wouldn't leave my son on a beach to yeah to run after. There was just there was just some scenes where you're just like but it's designed to show how different you know she is an alien and and to show when the she people does would start, die for each other. Yeah, as well. and when she does start to become aware of that, having been exposed to these human emotional extremes. Um, that's when the narrative turns again, doesn't it? Yeah, but she only she, she she in that same sequence on the beach, the guy goes to rescue the dad, mm. c- comes back onto the beach. She walks over and whacks him in the head with a rock. Mm. She still has <laughs> she, still she wants she's fuel. in she's in conflict with the way she's feeling and her assignment or her mission task, which is to take as many bodies as she can and feed mm. to this void yeah see but th- but this is the, this is the thing i find with the, there are many interpretations she, many yeah. interpretations many layers many conversation pieces about how this character acts all of us could be wrong all of us could be right in our own individual way well, and i'm just like but, that's what, but why didn't the film that's art you yeah much it from your own experience much so like solaris and, and 2001 this film is very artsy mm. and just like Solaris and just like 2001 it's just slow yeah given the the, the pacing is slow but there's there's so much more going on in every scene that lets you think and the film gives you enough time to let you think about those issues or things that the film is suggesting to you before it presents you the next case or the next scenario that she's yeah. going through. <sighs> I feel bad for you, Ian. Yeah. But I will say I have watched this film twice now and on the first viewing, I, it was exceptional. It left me plenty to go away and think about. On a second viewing of the film, I had, I will admit, I had trouble getting through it. There was at least two or three instances in the film where my mind had completely left the film and I was aware of myself checking Facebook or, <laughs> or checking my emails because I'd, I'd already got as much as I could from one viewing of the film. So I will say that it maybe doesn't stand up on a second viewing, but there's definitely, there's a plethora of material in there for you to think about whilst the film's playing out for you the first time. And as we've, we've suggested, the character does endeavour to try and explore humanity even more and of course Mm. she tries to discover her own body even more and that's key when she goes into a restaurant and she's eating like a a black forest gato cake yeah and she tries to eat it and she's salivating over it for a little while smelling it looking at the texture of it all and then she spits it or vomits it back out all over a plate Yes. And she, she can't enjoy the finer things that, that humans do. And then later on when she, I don't know whether she's, she gets on a bus and she's just ready to leave or just go somewhere. She just wants some solitude. She ends up being sheltered by, by this complete stranger yeah. who ends up taking her home and gives her her space, looks after her. And it eventually leads to a fairly intimate scene where they're about to have sex. And when he's on top of her, he realizes that something's quite not right. <laughs> <laughs> which causes her to have to closely examine her own her own genitalia, her own which of course would only be skin over the top of what is essentially an alien, which perhaps has completely different sexual reproductive systems to us, despite the fact they are 100% humanoid. So th- th- it does lend some credence see, to that, that rape even part. I read that differently as well, and because you don't actually see on screen what she sees, so we are assuming that there would be nothing there for them but to have sex with. But we thought we saw with. something but when she was But I thought it was that she, did, she just wasn't aware or wasn't having this feel, you know, in a society that's so obsessed, it seems at times, with sex, <clears throat> especially in the media, and the rea- you know, she and this power that she's had over men in terms of luring them, and it not being a particularly difficult challenge to get them in the car and yeah. to kill them, um, that... You know, she wasn't having any response, or she wasn't having any. She didn't know what 
what, 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 it, do. what it was all but, about even or why you know so again you can take different readings I but think, then on. she's never she's never actually had sex up until this point <laughs> she's never had a single physical encounter Mm. At, up until this point but the scenes with the two of them where they linger before they kiss mm. it's it's i mean it, he gives her enough time to pull away or to say yeah. no yeah. and he lets her be comfortable with it uh, i think and so she is wanting to try and experience this mm. whether she is she whether is, she's it feeling it or she not is. she wants to at least try mm -hmm. and that's something about her character again just wanting to try more and more mm. And that would take us to where she uh, goes and tries to abduct a man with some severe facial deformities. Yeah. And it's one of the most touching scenes in the film where he just wants to go to Tesco's, get his chocolate bar and yeah. go home. Yeah. Because he's like, a man like me that looks like this, I am never going to have sex in my life. And there's no chance that you are interested in me. And she... She's very gentle with him as well. She tells him all the things that he would perhaps like to hear. Yeah. He comp she compliments his hands mm -hmm. and compliments the things that he does have um, about his personality and his physical appearance. But lo and behold, she's an alien and she needs to feed the beast. So she takes him back and feeds him just like she's done all the other men. See, I, I, no, I, no. I see that as her. She eats the men. The, the, well, what I got from the cake eating scene when she throughout the cake was the fact that she can only feed off of men or, or, or humans, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's how she gains sustenance. The same when she gets taken back to that guy's house, he makes her beans on toast and she's, she, she's completely distracted by Tommy Cooper and he's there eating his full lunch. And I'm like, she's not going to eat because well, she it? doesn't. It goes on eat. like a conveyor belt though, doesn't it? Into a, it's one of the very yeah, the, CGI. The, the yeah. blood on the conveyor. And I think in like... the novel, which it was very loosely based on, um, it's human flesh is an incredibly valuable commodity on their planet, which right. is why they're, they're almost harvesting it, you know. So yeah. all of the, all of the organs and blood and muscle and bone we yeah. see just go straight down into Apart maybe an incinerator, skin, which they are. That that's where your um, your body snatching comes in. Yeah. And presumably, again, there's two readings as to why why she let that disabled man go because his skin wasn't of any use to them, mm. or was mm. it? Because I don't think she'd quite reached a self awareness at that point to want to save to that for person's humane reasons. soul. Yeah. 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 This is. So many. I, <laughs> I, I want to bring up. There is too much dick in this film. Too much. There's just too much. There, there. She lures these men to this place, and <laughs> you see this guy get taken into the black abyss, gravityless thing, and he can see another one of her victims and they're kind of just floating there you know like wanting to get out I, there's a nice little moment there where they're both suffering or they don't appear to be no. suffering but they both must be aware of the, i mean given one of them's completely intoxicated on drugs and alcohol mm. and he's probably completely spaced out and hoping he's just going to wake up with a bad hangover tomorrow but they have that moment where the two of them that are in this black void just hold each other's hands just temporarily yeah and it was just a nice little moment that but happened there. I just, the, the camera, like I said, the camera's just lingered on so many shots up to this point that led to nowhere that, you know, I'm sat there wanting it. I'm, you know, I was glad at the end of this scene when the, the guy's skin just kind of imploded. And he was gone. But I'd sat there for like three and a half minutes, flicking between two guys completely nude. There is nothing else in that scene to look at apart from this guy floating in a void. I'm already finding it difficult to try and question what's going on or, and, and explain to myself what I'm actually watching. And I've got this guy's dick just flopping in my face. 
So that should come as a warning to you guys that if you are extremely sensitive to nudity like Ian, you might not want to watch this film because Ian has some issues about his own genitalia, obviously. I'm fine with my own. It's just everybody else's I can't look at. And I didn't even notice it. I will say that when I watched this film, I watched this in an art cinema when it came out because, of course, normal conventional cinemas would never screen anything like this, especially with a film that has full male erections throughout the film and I will say that in the cinema that I watched it in it was reacted to by lots and lots of chuckles <laughs> whether you're an immature audience member watching this film and you're going to struggle to see male genitalia on the screen or whether you can get past that and actually see the see what's going on behind it there it is a challenging film to watch there's nothing going on behind it it's a black void with dick you should mind, Ian, and stop watching the dicks. There's still plenty else on screen. Watch their faces. See what they're reacting to. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. For for me, the casual viewer will not get this movie. This this movie, like I said, sits up there with Solaris and 2001 the Space Odyssey. It reminds me a lot of The Man Who Fell to Earth with David Bowie. Mm. You know, you're 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 following this completely alien view of the world as they wander around completing their tasks but at the same time there's just there's just not enough hooks every film should have a hook for you to just grasp hold of and be like right okay that's that's my start off point this this film just kind of just throws you into the black void and goes right either sink or swim you know i think it's a um it's a real testament to who we are as a society to watch ourselves through an alien eyes and the absurdity of a lot of the things that we do and a lot of the things that mean an awful lot to us. I, I, I don't particularly have one favourite scene in this film. I, the whole the whole film is a challenge to watch. Like I said on a second viewing, so I think I'm going to go with Ian's uh, usual unusual worst scene in the film, and it's not technically bad it's just emotionally scarring uh, as a viewer and this happened both the first time I watched it and the second time I watched it and it is that beach scene yeah oh. after after she's she's stoned and killed the diver and we've realized that both the father and the mother and the dog have all drowned at sea yeah and there is a crying baby there and we just see we see both we see her leave and we see the other guy go back the other alien possibly go back to yeah. hide away the evidence and all the while the baby is just sat there crying and the alien's just like got the evidence and off and then later on on a news broadcast uh, well later on she she's sat in the van and she can hear a baby crying and I was yeah. like well she's nowhere near the beach and it just happens to be another child in another car right next right next to her and so you're seeing the parallels there and then in the news broadcast later, you find out that that baby's also gone missing. Yeah. And for me, that was, it was the way the film handled it, because it was almost a documentary style, it, that, that really scarred me twice over. Yeah I, yeah, I felt the same thing about that sequence. I was just like, you know, okay, you're not explaining to me why you're leaving the baby there. And you, you haven't explained to me why the parents have given up their lives to try and save a drowning dog. I just, I, yeah. Um, my favorite scene has to be the the man with the the disability because obviously reading up on the background of this film uh the director didn't want uh, an actor with just prosthetics on his face he wanted actually somebody with with a disability so they went and looked into a company that deals with this got a guy and the guy actually gave notes to Scarlett Johansson about how she should talk to him and how she should react to him and i just loved that whole conversation because it was out of the whole thing in the film, that felt the most real. I'll give you that as well. That scene for me was very genuine, very touching as well. Yeah. I will point in quickly as well, apart from obviously the multitude shots of Dick in the film, one other scene that I really disliked, and I called this before this happened, was a sequence where Scarlett Johansson and the guy that she's met on the bus had gone to a castle in Scotland and they're going on a walk or something. And you watch this shot of the guy at the top of the castle. And I thought to myself, we're going to have a filler scene of them walking down some stairs. And not two minutes later, we watched them walk down their stairs. <laughs> now, do you want to talk about multiple layers and interpretation about films? I watched two people walk down some stairs. What am I supposed to interpret from that scene? <laughs> Is 
he above her? No, he was helping her down. It could just be <laughs> that they were doing something for the sake of it, Ian, and they were just having a nice day out, and the trust that she had in terms of him helping her down. So. No, I okay. don't know. I'm grasping at straws. <laughs> <laughs> she was bonding with someone that she had no intention of perhaps feeding to the beast. Yeah. They walked downstairs for that's three a minutes. better way of articulating it. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what you saw, Ian. Yeah, but that's, that's what not what was going on in their minds. No, that's not. Uh, my favourite scenes, um, gosh, it's difficult. I do, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the hidden cameras that they used um, when Scarlett Johansson was viewing our world. Yeah. Um, and they were unscripted as well. Some of the people that she was trying to pick up genuinely weren't aware that it was Scarlett Johansson and yeah. that they were being filmed. So I loved the real, the realism of that. Um, and I also loved the ending. I loved when she tore the skin off. And although we knew that she was an alien, to see that visually and to see that difference and yeah. to see her tearing, and it reminded me a little bit of um, the ending of Dangerous Liaisons as well, where she rubs her makeup off and she's... You know, she's traumatised and she's tearing at this yeah. this representation of everything that it that meant. she was, yeah. Everything that she was, everything that, that she couldn't be, every, you know, the misunderstanding. I thought that was a terribly powerful scene. Yeah, the, the ending of the film is very striking. Mm -hmm. And again, if to tie up that, the, um, the rape analogy of yeah. her character, because at the end of the film, she is... Uh, for all intents and purposes, there is an attempted rape on her, and that is when her skin is torn, and we, we really see the alien that she is. Mm. And it is a very striking moment when her skin is just flapped around around her waist. I didn't get that because she'd already bashed somebody's head in with a rock. Why didn't she bash that guy's head in with a rock? Just a literal here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I. I am iffy about whether I recommend the film or not. I, I enjoyed it as a first time experience, but then I was in in a theatre where it was kind of, I was locked in on the film. Yeah. Watching it at home and also on a second viewing, I had a lot of trouble getting through it because everything that I got from the film, I'd already got. The, on a second viewing, the film actually didn't offer me anything new and its long pace was 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 over bloated for for what I am accustomed to as well and I, I assimilated everything I needed to in the film in one sitting on a second viewing it was it was over over long but it's still an engaging thought provoking film that you can you can even change your interpretations or go away and read other interpretations of the film and then go back and watch it again and add all those different elements to it mm. It is not species, it's not Mars attacks, <laughs> it's not invasion of the body snatchers, it's definitely not bad taste under the skin. I'm 50-50 as to whether you should check it out. If you've watched this video, you'll already know whether you're going to go and watch this film or not at this point. I I do recommend this film purely on the fact of you need to see this film at least once. At, at least once. The, the camera work is brilliant. The acting, not only from Scarlett Johansson, but from the multitude of people that she interacts with are really well done. The special effects on the alien creature and the, the blackened rooms are, are are brilliantly done but like gary said you don't get anything more for i don't think i could get anything more from the second viewing after not really getting anything from the first viewing if you're if you're really if you're really wanting to go out and see it go out and see it it does have the black widow naked but you have <laughs> to sit through a lot of dick <laughs> i would watch it in a dark room on a stormy night um, and just engage with it. Just engage with it on a personal level, um, on a, a societal level. Um, and I, I agree with you, Ian. I think everybody should see it at, at least once. It's a labour of love. But you have to invest in it mm. to get something back. Definitely. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews.